Hi, my name is Kelly Pittman, and I'm a Master for Nursing student at Athabasca University. Today, I am going to discuss why harm reduction programs should not be covered under the Canada Health Act. Have you ever wondered how health care services were covered under the Canada Health Act? If your answer is no, well today, I'm going to walk you through why harm reduction programs should not be covered under the Canada Health Act. For my first argument on why harm reduction programs should not be covered by the Canada Health Act, harm reduction programs are not medically necessary under the Canada Health Act. The Canada Health Act has five criteria for programs to meet to be eligible for funding. These five criteria are public administration, comprehensiveness, universality, portability, and accessibility. Today, I'm gonna to focus on comprehensiveness. The Canada Health Act defines comprehensiveness as a Canadian insurance coverage that includes services provided in a hospital, provided by a medical practitioner, and by a dentist. Harm reduction programs are not shown to be provided in a hospital by a medical practitioner or a dentist. The research shows that these services are provided by fixed sites, mobile sites, pharmacy distribution, vending machines, and peer-based outreach. For my second argument on why harm reduction programs should not be covered by the Canada Health Act, harm reduction programs in Canada are already meeting international standards. The research has found that needle exchange sites in Canada are offering 91 more needle exchanges than the international standards recommend. This is 45.5% higher than international recommendations. And opioid agonist treatments are offered to 66% of people who inject drugs in Canada. This is 26% higher than the international standards. Why are we going to fund a program that is already flourishing and exceeding? Don't you think the money should be allocated to a program who is not meeting international recommendations? For my third argument on why harm reduction programs should not be covered under the Canada Health Act, there is not enough research or evidence to support Canada Health Act funding. The research shows across Canada there is an insufficient amount of policies about harm reduction programs. Two Cochrane systematic reviews show inconclusive findings about harm reduction programs. As well, they state the need for high quality research to be completed on harm reduction programs. They also state the need for randomized controlled trials to be completed on this patient population. In conclusion, if you were on a committee to decide if harm reduction programs should be covered under the CHA, would you fund a program that is not medically necessary under the act? Would you fund a program that is already meeting international recommendations? Would you fund a program that has insufficient policies and research nationally.